My word, that ending to TLC. Um, okay. Randy Orton burns the fiend Bray Wyatt alive. Okay. It wasn't just like, oh, Bray Wyatt had his had his like his hand put in a bit of fire like these Inferno matches or Ring of Fire matches usually go. I said, literally, this match was the Fiend locking in a mandible claw on Randy Orton at the end, and then Orton flips it around, and the Fiend's back gets like burnt. So the Fiend's on fire. Therefore, technically, Randy Orton wins this match, which it was a bit of a, like a weird type of match brawl around ringside with the fire and you know the crowd and whatnot, but. Anyway, the Fiend Bray Wyatt is like on fire, he gets into the ring, Randy Orton RKO's him, so then the Fiend Bray Wyatt is like burning as he's been RKO'd, we see the camera cut to Randy Orton, and then from there Bray Wyatt presumably has had people put the fire out on him, and then from there we proceed to get Randy Orton walking over to ringside, grabbing gasoline, pouring it all over the Fiend, then Orton grabs a match, lights it, proceeds to stand there for like 10 seconds, commentary, Samoa Joe, Tom Phillips, these guys, they're begging, Orton, don't do this, don't do this. Orton proceeds to drop the match on The Fiend. The Fiend completely set ablaze, you've probably seen that in the thumbnail. Bray Wyatt's just completely burning. Okay, I'm sure that'll get my content demonetized. Jesus Christ, a man burning alive the way they did that? Oh my God, that, that was graphic? Jesus, okay. I mean, where they go from here, I don't know. Presumably, you'd assume what they did is they had Bray Wyatt sub out and they had some, like, stunt double take his place for that because no way they had an actual human being burnt like that. But nonetheless, dude, th that was some ending. Gee, okay, I, I talk about WWE giving us talking points. That was... Oh, boy, oh, boy. Um, rightio. So, yeah, The Fiend, Bray Wyatt got completely burnt alive by Randy Orton. Rightio. Okay, so... That was the main event. The rest of the show, well, the, the whole show in general, I really enjoyed. Now, am I saying that this show was just some amazing, incredible show? I mean, I really enjoyed it. So I'd say it was like a really good show. I think top to bottom, nothing on this show like sucks. Nothing on this show was terrible. I'm sure some people in the community will say Charlotte returning is terrible. Some people will say... I've seen someone say that Roman Reigns as Kevin Owens was terrible because there was too much interference. You see all this stuff in the wrestling community, but in my opinion and the consensus opinion, this show overall was like really good and you know one of the better pay-per-views WWE's done this year. Now I'm not going to go into in this video whether it's the best pay-per-view they've done. I'll go into that in another video, but just in general, really good show all around. I think one of the main things I enjoyed about it, like the moment I enjoyed most outside of you know, being taken aback by the ending was this right here. You're seeing it on screen. The Hurt Business, Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander defeated the New Day to win the Raw Tag Team titles. Therefore, the Hurt Business now has three championship belts. Okay, they have two titles respectively, but three championship belts. Lashley's US champion, Benjamin and Alexander are the Raw Tag Champs. MVP has done a phenomenal job. I was tweeting about this on, uh, you know, during the show. Shelton Benjamin was struggling to get matches on WWE main event. He could barely get a, like, a role on TV. Cedric Alexander was a, like a fill-in enhancement talent for life. Just some happy-go-lucky babyface was going to go nowhere. Lashley was kind of directionless with Lana, and then MVP was just there. They formed this stable, and MVP has led these guys to prosperity. It's so awesome to see the championships in this group. So, kind of see where the Hurt Business go from here. The, them winning the title tonight was awesome. So, that was that. As far as other stuff in this show, I think obviously Roman Reigns. Reigns defended the Universal title successfully against Kevin Owens. I think the fact that Jey Uso interfered so much in this match, I don't love it. I really don't. I think ladder matches in general, I don't really like. Now, obviously, the things these guys put their bodies through, I don't envy. The, the table bumps, the, you know, the spears through the barricade bumps, the spears through a table, Owens being backdropped and dropped on ladders, all this kind of stuff. Like, the bumps these guys take are absurd, and mad respect to them for that. But as far as the actual match itself, I think the, some of the psychology, like, this has always been a thing in wrestling, which I've hated. The amount of times in this match especially, Owens or Reigns was, like, at the top of the ladder, uh, especially Owens, because Owens is the baby face who's just trying to win the title. So, Owens, for him just standing there, he, he can just grab the title, but he doesn't. He has to wait for Jey Uso to run in interfere or Reigns to stop him. So, that kind of stuff I didn't like. But that's just real, you know, nitpicky type stuff. When Reigns was in that position at the top of the ladder, about to grab the title, and he didn't bother doing it. Yes, it makes him look a bit dumb, but per storyline, he's trying to kill Kevin Owens. So, it gets a pass. Now, the match itself, really good. It made Kevin Owens look great. 
It really did. Kevin Owens looks like a real fighting baby face. Roman Reigns retains the title. So, all in all, I'd say pretty good. Reigns retains. Going on from here, I don't know what they're going to do. Wait to be seen, but yeah. It was a good match tonight with Reigns and Kevin Owens. Good stuff all around. As far as this stuff, Charlotte Flair made a return on the show as well. Like, plenty of talking points in this show, which you love to see. So, Charlotte Flair made a return. This was spoiled during the day. Like, I don't know exactly, exactly where the source came from. I saw this from Wrestling Observer. So, I think it was them. I'm not going to put 100% weight on it being them because I don't fully know for sure. But I saw Brian Alvarez tweet Charlotte like eight hours ago. So, basically, you knew, okay, Charlotte's in the premises. Charlotte's probably going to be the tag team partner. Most of us predicted that. Like, I, I mentioned that in my preview. Most of you guys predicted that. So, it was hardly overly shocking. But it was good to see wrestling journalism spoils another moment that could have been at least kind of cool. But instead, it got totally spoiled. So, that was a bit annoying. The match itself, Charlotte Flair basically got a hot tag, proceeded to go on like a three to four minute run and get the win for a tag team. So yeah, Asuka and Charlotte Flair are the new women's tag team champions. One thing this does mean is that Charlotte can now go across all the brands, which is a bit, a bit eh. But regardless of that, the actual match itself was fine. Going forward, probably going to have Charlotte Flair eventually turn on Asuka. So that'll be fine, I guess. Yeah. And that was what they did there. Charlotte Flair is back. She's now Grand Slam champion in the women's division. Some people are probably going to complain and cry about it. I just don't care. I just don't care. I, I nothing Charlotte Flair. Like, some people hate Charlotte. Some love Charlotte. I don't really care how you view Charlotte Flair. Personally, she's just... She's a, a women, uh, She's one of the greatest women's wrestlers of all time per resume and per her abilities and talents. So, I've got to respect that. But as far as what she does on TV... I. I don't really connect to Charlotte Flair. She needs more of a character. She needs to develop something besides the Queen because the Queen, it's not really a compelling character. She comes out with the, the robe and whatnot and then does, you know, Ric Flair's woo. And that, that's Charlotte Flair. So she needs to develop more of a character if I am to care about her. That's just my personal opinion. So that's that. Speaking of other women's wrestlers, Charlotte Flair. Charlotte Flair. Sasha Banks. There we go. Sasha Banks successfully retained against Carmella. Fair enough, not really much else to say there. Sasha Banks beat Carmella. And finally, the last thing I'm going to talk about, the last match there is, the WWE Championship, Drew McIntyre, AJ Styles. Really good match this one. This match opened the show, really good stuff. Like, all round, the match was great. Then, late on in the match, Drew McIntyre, I believe he got power. Something happened where both guys were basically down. The Miz came down. John Morrison proceeded to you know help the Miz cash in. And then Omas, I think his name, Omas, Omas, whatever Styles' bodyguard name is, he scared off Morrison, he beat up the Miz, so he made the match, so it became a triple threat match, Omas made it, like, a level playing field, then McIntyre ended up winning the match, so Drew McIntyre ends 2020 standing tall, as he should, the Miz fails his Money in the Bank cash-in, at this point, the Money in the Bank briefcase, either get rid of it, or have a complete overhaul, like, you know, scrap the pay-per-view, you, you've ruined Money in the Bank like you've ruined Hell in a Cell, at this point, they're that dead, like, Money in the Bank especially, the last four years, really ever since Rollins had it, Money in the Bank's been dead, so, yeah, sucks to see, but then again, Miz isn't champion, so I'm happy about that, so yeah, that's been the video, TLC 2020, really good pay-per-view, I'd say, so yeah, if you missed the pay-per-view, go and check it out, like, comment, subscribe, it's drill, see ya.